Since we've been gone, Blake's been through some fairly significant changes. Well, not as significant as the quarter-life crisis more commonly known to 20-somethings the world over as the second puberty. We've had one, yes. What about second puberty? The metamorphosis Blake has undergone in the last year is still a very big deal. Now, don't even try to tell me a haircut isn't a big deal. YouTube stardom rises and falls on good hair branding. Oh, Hat Blake is so weird. <laughs> no, he's cool. No, no not. He's cool. No, he's been rebranded. Now here comes a brand champion with an online presence. And oh howdy did Blake have an online presence. Follow us everywhere. Just check out the sort of thoughtful and incisive commentary that he received from our fellow wildlife enthusiasts in this thread from a carnivorous plant subreddit. Well, that girl is super pretty. I am no woman. Blake even made it in front of the eyes of over 5,000 Instagram followers on the family, couple, and lifestyle photographer Ivy and Gold's Smith Rock State Park photo shoot. At the Blake Looney Experience, follow for follow. At the time of this writing, the Blake Looney Experience is sitting pretty on a pile of 63 Instagram followers, 36 YouTube subscribers, and a whopping one Twitter fan. It's me. Follow us anywhere. You could say that our first social media blast went off like the opening ceremonies of the Helms Deep Olympics. <laughs> Yet, despite our explosive exposure, I quickly discovered that when left to my own electronic devices, it is very easy to get lost in a dark social media lair. Everywhere I turned I was reminded that our channel was a tiny little fly expected to be eaten by the oversized media monsters that dominate the platform. But just when all other lights had gone out, I was reminded of a little vial of hope given to me for desperate moments such as these. Ah, welcome. Our journey had brought us this far. And if Blake was willing to give it a shot, then I wasn't going to let spending too much time googling how to make a successful YouTube channel stop us. So, I untangled myself from the interweb and re-emerged into the dim light of uncertainty. Up to this point, all of the previously recorded reptile road trip footage had been used up on our first two videos, leaving us face to face with the beast dreaded by internet creators everywhere. O.C. Orange County? I wish. Original content. So. Without further ado, hairdo, take it away, Blake. We're in Benton County, Oregon. This is Chip Ross Park. I've gone here quite a bit and found quite a bit of things. This is really pretty too. You can see like all of Corvallis. I fully expect to just walk right up and find a gigantic creature, because that's what happened last time, so why not? Can I say hi to you? Hi. <laughs> what are what are we looking for? Yeah. We're looking for the southern alligator lizard, Elgaria multicarinata. Pronunciation is I never get it Latin. That's okay, because I know just the person to help. Introducing for the very first time, a new special segment of the Blake Looney Experience. Visual Epitheta with Hedda. Thanks for being here. Okay, this is how we pronounce and memorize the scientific name, also known as the specific epithet of the southern alligator lizard. Elgaria multicarinata. To begin, we need to break down the Latin into its component parts. We begin with L, as in Elrond the Elf. Next comes Gar, as in the species of fish native to the Forbidden Pool, known for its horrifying teeth into which Gollum loves to sink his horrifying teeth. Ea, as in eating fish raw and wriggling, may result in diarrhea. Multi, as in the multiple times I wish Frodo would spare us the anguish by learning to share. Just let Sam take the ring for a little while. 
Kari. As in I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Nada. As in the Spanish word for how much of this Lord of the Rings inspired mnemonic device you will actually remember. Nothing! All together now, Elgaria Multicari Nada. Can I get a round of applause for Hedda? Back to Blake. This is a great place to find them. They like these open fields that have potential ground cover and stuff, and they like to lay their eggs around like dead, rotting wood material. Um, so we're gonna be looking under some of those for anything we can find. So. Get that camera out of my face. Oh. Right here. Gigantic gopher snake. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It just went in this, it might be totally gone. Yep. I'm not gonna dig it out too much, but it did go right in there. Wow. Wow. Well, let's hit the trail again. We found a gopher snake. It, it ran down a hole, well, slithered down a hole lickety split, which is great. It's very fun to see those, but if I were an alligator lizard, I would not want to live near something that could eat me really easily. Is there an obvious parallel here between the people of Lake Town living way too close to a pissed off Benedict chicken pox and the 2013 epic high fantasy adventure film, The Disappointment of Warner Brothers? Sure, but God knows how much blood has already been spilled on that topic. And honestly, I still get pretty sad thinking about it. So let's just let sleeping dragons lie, shall we? We're gonna go a ways up and look elsewhere and maybe find that gorgeous snake on the way back down. <laughs> Cause that'd be cool. <laughs> Oh man. Unfortunately, <laughs> we never saw that gopher snake again. <laughs> Losing our first sighting down the gopher hole could be disheartening on an empty stomach. So we called it a break and stopped for lunch at Blake's craft brewery of choice. Time to head to the car, grab a bite, and then go to Bald Hill. We're going to our my favorite restaurant to eat, Block 15 for lunch, as a little midday break when the reptiles are not out and block 15 has decided to take care of their fly problem by filling it with saracenia which is a carnivorous plant that is really good at eating flies not local it lives more east coast but it's really cool and they are in the same family as the the cobra lily yeah link below <laughs> i'm gonna get the southwest salad pretty excited about that a really good salad Smoked chicken. The salted pork is particularly good. <laughs> Starting route to Bald Hill. Oh boy, don't you go, sir. Yes. All right, we're ready to continue. Let's get hacking. There's a huge gopher snake shed right there. That would be cool to see. So this is the head. This is one of the eye plates here. There's another one. This is the jawline right there. When they shed, they shed the entire top layer of skin, including the eyes. That's why snakes don't blink. And so in Harry Potter, the snake in the very first book, I think it was a Burmese python that Harry Potter was looking at. He winks at Harry when Harry makes the glass disappear. And that, like ever since I was like 11 years old, that has bugged the crap out of me because snakes can't blink. They just don't have eyelids. There's no way for them to blink. There's no, nothing there for them to even like enclose their eye with because they're covered in skin. That's the protective layer. They don't need eyelids. If we can find a snake here, you can, you can actually touch its eye very softly, albeit nothing will happen because there's a layer of skin that covers it. So in Harry Potter, when that happens, kind of bugs me. That's that's always gotten me. I've wanted to email her about it. She's a little too popular now. Um, Cause everyone that I tell makes fun of me and they say, well, it's just magic. And I can write the basilisk off as a legless lizard. But even then, like the python was real. And then she says it blinks and there's just no way. There was no way. Lizards, right? They. They have eyelids, so they blink. Snakes. Oh, that's a wasp nest. It's 
worth mentioning here that this abrupt panic had been a recurring theme throughout the day. Oh, we, you've got a wasp like right on your, I'm sure he wants to sting you. Oh boy. There, sometimes you can get, uh, uncover wasp hornet's nests too. <laughs> oh man. These kinds of things. Woo! Are great for wasps. Keep running into I just don't want to get stung. I don't like wasps. I'll get bit by whatever. I just don't want to get stung. I don't know what the difference is. We have disturbed a very angry nest of wasps. We've woken the hive! That said, not even a phobia of wasps could quell the excitement of our next discovery. But while we're here, zoom all the way down on that piece of poop right there. I promise you that's lizard poop. Lizards, like many animals, they have, careful. Let's, I'm gonna drop this, let's go. I've been stung way too many times. But that is classic lizard poop. And I'll bet the only lizard big enough uh, to produce something like that is Algaria multicarinata. Did you see that? Dang it. There he goes. I hate to do this to you again, but that one got away too. Okay, this is great. That means we're doing something correct. There are things here, which is all we need. We've already found a shed. There's food everywhere. That poop, that's excellent. I know it's just poop, but so many positive signs here though. This is beautiful. Speaking of positive signs. Let's go to the new crossing. Oh, <gasps> Joel, that, there it is. Algaria multicarinata, <laughs> right in front of me. Should I grab it or do you want to film it first? No, no, I'll grab it. I can't see it. All right, what we've got here, this is exactly what we have spent all day trying to find. <laughs> Essentially, we set out today to look for this as a start to our little channel, right? <laughs> Excuse me, what? Little little kids channel. <laughs> so that's how it's going to be. <laughs> Fine. Just kidding. It's fine. Sort of. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> this is a really cool species of lizard. The southern alligator lizard. Elgaria Multicarinata. This is an amazing, amazing lizard. They have a super, super wide range all across the West Coast. You want me to just start spouting <laughs> yeah. facts? The facts. I can talk about how you can see the scales on the back, how they're keeled. So like a boat, each individual scale comes up to a specific ridge and they're reinforced with bones, which is why they're called alligator lizards because alligators um, back and belly scales are also reinforced with bone. And as hard as dragon scales. She looks to be in excellent shape. They've got this flap. You can see it really prominently right here. See that? There's so much extra skin. So that flap is used in case they ingest a really large meal and you can see these really granular scales all along the side of the body here that are clearly different than these keeled scales on the side. It's extra storage. They can expand when they feel threatened, like this one probably does right now, and makes them look bigger. Or if they're full of eggs, they have more space to work with, or if they eat an exceptionally large meal. They have a semi-prehensile tail. See how it kind of wraps, almost like a snake, see that? A prehensile tail is like, helps with their movement a lot of lizards don't have that range of mobility with their tails, and these guys do. The monkey lizard obviously does. And this is actually the very first time in my life that I've held one without getting bitten. This is so cool. 
they've got some some counter shading here so when they're hiding among these the brush it sort of resembles areas of of more concentrated shade and then a lighter green like the like the background the northern alligator lizard is a little bit northerly and it's it's much smaller it's about this big total and again this one is super docile i've never had this happen But this is it. This is what we've been looking for all day. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited. Finding finding something this amazing is always such a treat. Okay, are we ready? So this is exactly where we found her. And we're just going to try to put her right back. Exactly where she was. Amazing. And there it goes. <laughs> oh man. Doesn't it feel so good when you look all day for something and then you find it? Doesn't it look so good when you look all day for something and find two? <laughs> right here. Right here. Are you I'm not kidding, it's right here. <laughs> you serious? Welcome to bonus day. Oh, on my feet. This looks like a northern alligator lizard to me. Yeah, this looks brown. When Blake said that the northern alligator lizard was a little bit northerly, he was not kidding. I'm not kidding. The northern alligator lizard was in fact exactly three feet north of the southern alligator lizard. I could dig forever and maybe never find it now. I think you can see where this is going. I am so sorry. Maybe I was just being impatient, but in what should have been a victory celebration, losing the northern alligator lizard was the final arrow in the floating coffin of my own negative thinking. It brought me right back to that dark layer of doubt. Even if I was able to regularly upload videos once a month, it would take us three and a half years to make it through the reptiles of the Northwest, to say nothing of the universally recommended weekly upload. It was overwhelming, and as the strength of my wide-eyed optimist faltered, I'll admit to wondering if we really were doomed from the beginning. And it's just all thing. In the time since our southern alligator adventure, I've certainly taken my turn in sharing Gimli's pessimism. But what I forget is the love of the journey. If I can learn to enjoy the journey, wherever it leads, it could never be a waste. What if we hold true to each other? And there it goes. <laughs> that is so cool. Not if we hold true to the love of the journey, nowhere more evident than in the Blake Looney experience. Travel light. Let's go find more. Thanks for watching. If you're feeling mighty and wish to brave Shelob's social media lair, I would love it if you liked and followed the Blake Looney experience anywhere and everywhere. Most especially, subscribe to us here on YouTube and leave a comment. Any thoughtful and incisive commentary you have to share is warmly welcomed. Most especially, spicy Lord of the Rings memes. Good luck out there and see you again soon.